Welcome, welcome, welcome to Coaching YouTube. Sorry, I'm laughing when we come on. I was making fun of Phil before we came on and cut him off because I have my control of the record my, uh, button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy uh, September. Yeah. I know you don't have fall in uh, in California. We have fall in uh, Wisconsin. So it'll be a little bit of a change, not quite as drastic as so it goes from dry to drier, or does it go from wet no, 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 dry no, no. to wet? It goes a little, little dry. Let's start. It'll start sprinkling a little bit. The weather get a little cooler. So our leaves change and fall on the ground, and then need to be raked. I mean, our, we have change of seasons like that. It's not as again. Not as profound, but definitely happens. Yeah, I know. It kind of does. Um, all right. So what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about the art of the timeout, mastering Ooh. timeouts, Ooh. which I think is a good subject for all of us to learn from, uh, especially uh, in those heated situations or close game situations. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that you need to incorporate into your practices, practicing timeouts. And we'll 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 dive into that, but first, a uh, big shout out to uh, Game Changer. Uh, go to gc.com forward slash coaching youth hoops. Uh, you guys, you guys, I hate saying that. Coaches, you will absolutely love Game Changer. It's a tool that I use to record games. Uh, if a parent can't be there, they can tune into a game live. You're going to get real time feedback, stats that you can then uh, go back reference make changes that you needed to your game plan. And again, gc.com forward slash coaching youth hoops. Interesting. Yeah. I, all you guys, you ever wonder who's listening? Like the people that are like, I'm in their ear right now. Do you ever wonder about that coach? It's kind of weird. I, it is kind of weird. You know, I, uh, all of you the know, world. I always love all over the world. Yes. I mean, you got a world run reach, which is awesome. I love though. when uh, I'm, I'm out. And someone like I'd been at a couple of tournaments and someone will come up to me. I love your podcast. And I'm like, always surprised at that. I'm like, Oh, oh I Great. appreciate it. Thanks Glad for listening. You listen. you know? I know. Yeah. No, and we we're not even out and about. We have plans to get out and about at some point. At some point. Yeah. Like, our big one though is the fall, you know, we're going to, uh, we're doing a free clinic giveaway. Um, so hopefully we'll get that winter announced, uh, but another month we have that open. So. Yep. Um, and what else? We have our free 18,000 page uh, checklist, right? No? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, coaches, we put together a ch checklist to help you uh, prep for your season. If you go check that out at coachingyouthhoops.com forward slash season dash checklist. Again, season dash checklist, coachingyouthhoops.com season dash checklist. Um, and it, it literally has everything that you need to do to prep for a season you can use it during the season as well as great reminders of stuff you need to think about questions to ask yourself so you can help yourself plan out every detail let us know if we, uh once you get it let us know if we missed anything happy yep. to and if any, any, any of you are watching on youtube and you, some of you are probably listening you can't see this took coach like he aged like 17 years making this checklist so oh, it's God. <laughs> it was a lot yeah, it was a lot of work it's a lot it's good though it's really good it's pretty really thick good. pretty thick document yeah so. and if, if you go through that i'm not going to guarantee you're going to win more games but you'll definitely feel better you'll about be, yeah you'll, you'll feel the, you'll be less stressed let's just put it that way yes yes you'll be yes. the most organized court uh, coach on the court guaranteed yeah. and and quickly Last thing is offensive finder are, are powered by AI. My son laughed at me when I told him it was powered by AI, but it's powered by AI. Tell him about yeah. the offensive finder. Yeah. So uh, we built this tool. Uh, one of the questions we always get is what offense should I run? And so we built a tool that will help you to make those decisions. You answer a few questions about your team. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll spit back an offense that best matches your team's skill set and your needs and your coaching style. So go check that out. If you go to coaching youth hoops, uh, I forgot the URL coach. What is the URL? Coaching youth hoops. Not all. Oh, it's yeah. It's right. It's the long one. It is. Gotcha. It's all the right, one coaching youth the little, hoops. It's... Go, uh, go to coaching youth hoops.com. And, and then uh, forward slash youth dash 
basketball dash offense. You sure? Uh, he's going to check I, I right now. I got to so I, I double check. I, he's going to double check. The reason I make fun of him it before is. we jump into timeouts is I said, Coach, you got to come up with better URL than that. Come wow. on. like. But that's right. I think that's right. Yeah? It is right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk about timeouts. Let, um. I think this is an under-practiced, underutilized skill set, me personally. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I think the um, there is an art to the timeout. You have your 30s and your fulls, and I think it does need to be practiced because you can see it in games where, I'll tell you my biggest pet peeve when it comes to timeouts. I call it a timeout or other coaches' timeout. Players are walking over. Like you yeah. literally just wasted five seconds of a 30 second timeout or so, more. So when I do a full, I tell them to, they got to get over to the bench. And, and, and again, this is at the high school level, but I said that first 15 seconds is yours. Cause I'm usually talking mm -hmm. to my coaches and I usually only want to, you know, we'll talk about what happens in the timeout, but I'm talking to my coaches and we're, we're synthesizing. Okay. What do we need to do? What do we need to talk about? Blah, 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 blah. And it also lets them kind of calm and think and talk to each other. Um, that is one skill that we do practice is, you know, during, during the, like, um, you know, what do you, you guys should be talking to each other? Like, Hey man, did you see that they're setting Paul screens, blah, 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 or whatever it is. There should be a discussion there before I get to back to that timeout. Um, but we practice that. I mean, during practice, I'll call a timeout and they'll run over the bench and, you know, I'll have one assistant talk to them about what they should be doing. Cause again, it's like, it's kind of like one of those leadership things. It's like, unless you, we need more leaders. Well, you got to tell them what a leader does. You have to tell them That's what right. they need That's to right. do in that timeout yeah. or they won't know, or they're just going to sit there and drink their water or Gatorade or whatever they have. Um, water's the best. Don't drink Gatorade. Anyway, uh, that's a different podcast. Uh, but I think that's important. And, and, and you know, and, I don't know how you structure your timeouts, but mine are very hard for someone that likes to talk, but very precise. Um, the most important thing I say is at the beginning and at the end. So if there's something that they need to remember, I say it at the beginning and I, I repeat it at the end. Mm, yeah. um, Cause half the time they're not going to remember it if I don't do that. Um, but I think that's, you know, and then I always make sure, you know, we want a state title just because someone called the timeout and didn't have one. So we're always reminding them how many timeouts we have, who's the possession arrow to those kind of things. Cause I think you got to talk through that skill set with them. Um, do you, uh, do you use all your timeouts typically in a game? <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, uh -huh. I don't, I don't tend to. I tend Is that to good or bad? Keep... Is that neither here? No, there, or... I, well, there's a couple reasons, but the, probably the biggest is I feel that like, like, I feel like they're gold. Me personally mm -hmm. feel like they're gold. Um, yeah. And uh, I feel like if, I, if I'm if i down six and I have three timeouts in the last two minutes, we can win it because I can stop the clock and I can make adjustments and I can do things. Um, so, no, I usually have timeouts in the pocket at the end of the game. Very Sometimes I don't, but most of the time I would say I'm stingy with timeouts. Um we do have a rule in our program that that on a loose ball, we never call a timeout. You know, yeah, we, with, yeah, in yeah. the scrum on the floor, we right. never call a timeout. And the reason is we know that we're not calling it. We know that we're going to scrum it and get it and that people got to get open and they're going to pass it to them. I just think it's a waste of a, you know, you only have so many of those timeouts. You know, maybe you only have three left. I don't want to waste one jumping out of bounds and calling a timeout. The possession isn't that important. The, 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 it'll be more important for us to be able to stop the clock later. So I, I do talk to my players about that. I think that's an important thing. Sorry. Yeah, I, I absolutely. No, I absolutely agree with you. I think that's, uh, uh, I, yeah, has setting up those rules ahead of time. Are you going to call a timeout on a jump ball situation, right? Or a scrum and, um, it's good to set up front. Um, you know, one of the things I do, I mean, because the other part in a timeout is, depending on the situation, calming nerves. So um, one of the things that I do is I, I ask a silly question, you know, just to like get their mind shifted or make them smile a little bit and take them, especially at the youth level is 
you know, one of the questions I ask is, well, I'll call a timeout and I'm like, call everybody's together. And I'm like, who's your favorite superhero? Right. I'm like, I'll call a particular person because that's not what they're expecting. They're not expecting right. me to say I will that. Look, I'll look up right. at them with the big, and if you've ever seen, I mean, Coach, I don't, you have to come, you got to come to a game I'm, anyway. September? Do you have a game in September? No, you no, won't start. Oh, sorry, you start late. Game. That's right. You're going to have yeah, to come okay. to a game. But I'll anyway, if you've ever seen me, Coach, pretty intense. Anyway, I will come to, I will come down there and I'll just, I'll look at them, get the biggest smile and go, is it this fun? Like kind yeah. of. Just to make them giggle, like, oh my God, what's wrong, coach? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's a close yeah. game. It's going back and forth. It's like, this is great. This is great. Like, or again, I'll tell a joke. Um, I have had in the last probably five years had several silent timeouts. Hmm. Have you ever done a silent timeout? No, never. I just look at them. I don't say anything for the entire timeout. Just look at them. Because it's one of those situations. Yeah. Situation is maybe we're not doing what we need to do. Right. We're not yeah, playing yeah. hard. We're not doing it. It's but like, they know gonna, it. They, yeah. they, 100%. You yeah. just see it in their eyes. They, it's like, holy yeah. crap. Coach just right. burned a full time out and didn't say one word the whole time out. Just stared at him. Just looked at him. Like, anyway. Anyway, but there, but you got to use it. And that, and I, and I'm not getting mad. It's just like they know that, ooh, something's not right. Yeah. Like something's not right. Yeah, there's a reevaluation yeah. of what's going on at that time. Um, well, the other thing that I do too, especially when we're down, I'll ask them. I just, again, age old question: How do you need? How do you eat an elephant? It's one bite, bite at, at a time. time. Yeah. And like we can't, you know, you you can't go out and score ten points right now, right? You can score one basket to get us to two, and then another right. one, and then another one. You got to, you know, like we'll we'll chip away. A lot of times, I see that they chip away and they come right. back and they make the comeback. Now we don't always win those games, but they come back out after that timeout. And that's a good bit okay. of advice for, yeah. for, for the youth coaches too, is, is, you know, let's say, let's say you're going into the fourth quarter and you're down 10. Hey, let's get this to five by the four minute. You know, yeah, you give them goal. like, yeah. or, or we've all been in games. You're down 20. It's like, okay, listen to me. We got to get this to 10. By the end, you know, you're down 20 halfway through the third quarter. You take a timeout, you sit them down, you go, We're gonna do this, this, this. We're gonna get this to 10 by the beginning of the third, by the beginning of the fourth quarter. That's our goal. Let's get this to 10. You like you said, you can you gotta give them like a little micro games within the game, and that's a great thing to do in a timeout because it resets yeah. them. It's like, oh, we coach only wants us to get this down. He's not saying get all 20 points back, he's saying get 10 points back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a smart uh player. We were, I mean, we were never going to win this game. Just, we didn't have our horses and it's just, we, this team was just way, they were just way more talented better. than we were. Sometimes, sometimes the other team's better. Yeah. And this, uh, one of the, one of the girls that has been with me for a long time, she took over the timeout, which I loved in this particular situation. Cause she saw the look on my face. Like I was really just, and she just said, coach, we're going to score X number of points by the end of this game and it wasn't like you know right. she didn't come out and say win and we're not you know, she wasn't saying we're going to go score 20 additional points she was just like i think it was like six she's going to score we're just going to get six more points in this game i'm like great you know how happy they were when they got six right and you know how quickly they got six yeah i'm like hey why don't we go for 10 now you know what i mean right yeah they set the goal they did it um but the other thing is um uh you know, there was a, there was a, uh, th this goes into this story and I'm going to butcher it. Sorry, Celtics fans. Uh, but there, in a timeout, um, close game and championship game, uh, the Celtics, Larry Bird comes over to the bench and um, uh, Larry takes over the, Larry takes over the timeout from the coach and says, uh, um, inbound the ball to me and everyone else get out of the way. This is what right. Larry Bird says to the coach in the timeout. And the coach pipes up and says, I'm the coach. I say what to do during the timeout. Or I say what to do to finish this game. And the coach comes back and says, get the ball to Larry and everyone else clear out of the way. And they laugh. <laughs> was, and they laugh, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it was a good good story. Uh, and again, Celtics fans, I apologize. Maybe I butchered that story a little bit, but... Let's go through. So, coaches, this is the time. Take out your notebooks. We're going to do a hey, before quick we do recap. that, give a big shout out to oh, yeah. Game Changer again. Yeah. Yeah. Coaches, go to gc.com forward slash coaching youth hoops. Uh, 
your perfect tape solution the for you can tape the timeout. Take the time, I was going to say, take a timeout. That's right. GC.com forward slash coaching youth hoops. All right. So number, number one, get your notebook, out, notebooks out. Here we go. Practice timeouts, simulate them during a proc, during a game, or I mean, during practice, right? Yep. Teach players to quickly come over to the sidelines. Coach, you use a towel, right? Sometimes if, oh, that's the, on the exchange, but, um, you know, I don't know how you exchange if you're switching out players during a timeout. Yeah, I usually have an assistant coach do that, but in some in some coaches, I don't do this. Some coaches will actually have you sit in a specific order. Mm. Um, I don't do that. I think it's yeah, don't too complicated for me and yeah. definitely too complicated for them. But again, how you structure your timeout, like how do you, where do you want people standing, all, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so first one, practice timeout. Second one, structure of a, what, what does a structure look like? A 30-second timeout. This is what you do. One thing, focus on one thing, one thing, one thing, can't stress that enough. One thing, a defense, quick uh, quick hitter, whatever that one thing might be if they're not playing the way you want them to play. Make that the point of it. Use simple, clear language. Full timeout, divide it up into segments. Pipe in here, coach, if I got this wrong, right? First 10 seconds, just calm the players down if needed. Take the next 20 seconds to explain your strategy. And then maybe the last 10 seconds, kind of a motivational rah, rah, get them excited right. or the last five, I should say. And always, and again, as always, repeat like Coach said, and with a clear, concise summary. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, using a whiteboard, right? Um, you know, make it. <laughs> Do make, not I, diagram. I'm going to give some advice to a youth yeah. coach. If you don't die, don't don't be um, Coach K. You ain't going to diagram up a play, and they're going to run it. Per, like if you haven't run it. Yeah. Now. Uh, the whiteboard is to sh remind them of what that's they right. need to do, not to. Yeah, that's right. Confirm that for the movie parts, right? yeah. so We're going to, you know, yeah. we'll run the picket fence for you, Jimmy. We'll run, you yeah. know, I'm sure they ran the picket fence in practice a lot before that. Yes, but... that's probably right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, plan you plan your timeouts on uh, based on game flow. As coach said, he doesn't necessarily use all of his. And when I was coaching high school, um, I don't, I didn't either. Um, in the league, the youth league, I typically do though. Usually using the the whole timeouts. Um, and as, you know, again, as coach said, avoid wasting timeouts on minor issues. Say them for critical moments. I think a minor issue coach brought up was the you know the um, loose ball and going after diving after the ball. Don't waste a necessarily timeout on there. But again, that's philosophy. Um, when to call a timeout. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when the opposing team goes on a run, set up a crucial offense or defensive play. When players look fatigued or unfocused and the, to break the momentum um, of the game or regain control. Anything else I missed on that list? No, I so. don't think so. I mean, okay, so, again, don't yeah. assume base knowledge. Yeah, don't assume base knowledge. That's right. Don't yeah. assume they know anything. Don't assume when they should call it, if they should not call it, how many timeouts they have. You know, yeah. like I've seen the best players on the court sometimes think they have a timeout and you don't have a timeout or call one when you shouldn't call one or call, you know, anyway. So don't assume, please. Coaches, take and again, the away. biggest takeaway is just practice a timeout. Yes. Would you know? Again, running over to the bench on a timeout, right? Yeah. Uh, practice your communication in that timeout. One specific thing, just key. All right. All right. Till next week, coach. Till next week, coach. Good luck out there, coaches.